I'm Scott Cohen from The Green Scene here for ConcreteNetwork.com. We're going to talk about stamped concrete finishes uh, and why I choose one type of stamped concrete finish over another. I'll take you to several different projects and show you examples of good stamped concrete work used in different applications depending on the needs for that particular client and that job site. In this particular case, I used a stone texture matting. Now this is stamped stone texture concrete where we used an integral color base concrete and two release colors as our antiquing on top. And when you use the release colors when the concrete's wet, it keeps the stamps from sticking to the base concrete and when you're done, it gives you the deep relief and it shows off the texture in the concrete. In this case, we scored the concrete about four feet on center. Scoring means we cut marks or cut troweled in marks while the concrete was wet to allow the concrete to shrink and expand where we wanted it to so that it cracks here instead of cracking at random. Now I chose this particular pattern on this job because it's a very simple pattern and it doesn't look too busy. Now I'm directly adjacent to real flagstone coping here and I like to use stone texture matting to accent the texture on the stone without trying to mimic the look of actual flagstones. When you use a flagstone stamp next to actual flagstone, it screams that it's fake because you have the real product right next to a, a faux product. Now, the stamp concrete finish that we chose here was a stone texture matting, but there's many other different options for stamp concrete. For instance, you could use an ashlar cut stamp, a cobblestone stamp, a random flagstone stamp, a stamp that mimics brick, or a stamp that mimics slate. There's many different choices out there and you want to work with a contractor that's familiar with those different options in your area. Now one of my favorite stamped concrete patterns is actually this wood planking pattern that we used here on this concrete bridge. Now this can be used as a patio finish and it looks like a large deck, but the advantage of a concrete stamped deck over a wood deck is we don't have to deal with splinters and we don't have to deal with the maintenance. So I like to use the wood texture stamping when we're doing something that's a little more rustic or natural. In this case we used it for a concrete bridge and this is cast in place concrete. You can see we cantilevered the outside edge of this when it was cast so that it looks like wood planks and it looks like uh, a bridge rather than just a stamped concrete pattern. It's got that third dimension to it. Makes it nice. When it comes to stamped concrete finishes, this ashlar cut pattern is one of my favorites. Some people refer to it as a Versailles pattern, but I like the depth and texture that we get on this particular stamp pattern. Now you want to be careful not to overdo this pattern because you don't want the texture too deep where your patio furniture will start to wobble on you and won't sit flat. Uh, this is a great pattern when you are, have large patio areas and you're setting it parallel to the house. It makes the backyard feel a lot larger. If you get into using other additional stones around a patio, then it's better to go to a pattern that has a little less detail in it and just go to a stamp texture matting. Uh, this pattern works well coordinated with bands, decorative bands around it, and help to delineate the patio area and make it feel like an outdoor room. I'm Scott Cohen for ConcreteNetwork.com. Thanks for watching.